morning everyone may i request everyone to be seated chief guest his excellency cpuc goel minister of commerce and industry consumer affairs and food public distribution and textiles government of india his excellency pavan kapoor ambassador of india to ue chairman c a sundar donani vice chairman c a anurag chaturvedi galaxy of past chairman guest my colleagues in the managing committee and respected members of the chapter a very good morning and namaskar i would like to place our special thanks to his excellency c a pius ji goel his excellency pavan kapoor for taking the time out of their busy schedule to address our members i am highly privileged and honored to welcome his excellencies and each one of you for joining us today for the session on india making resurgent strides towards a 5 trillion dollar economy now i request our chairman c a sundar donani to welcome our chief guest his excellency c a pius ji goel by presenting the bouquet and escorting on the dais Now I request all of you to rise for the national anthem of UAE and India. Now I request our chairman C A Sundar Nurani to deliver his welcome address. Thank you, C A Hari Kishan, Chief Governor. Today morning, His Excellency C A P R Goel Ji, Minister of Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs and Food and Public Distribution and Textiles, Government of India, His Excellency Pawan Kapoor, Ambassador of India to UAE, our Galaxy of Past Chairman I C A Dubai Chapter Vice Chairman C A Anurag Chaturvedi. members of the chapter my colleagues in the managing committee invited guests representatives from the media ladies and gentlemen a very good morning to all of you and namaskar we are indeed blessed to have with us his excellency cap goel who will be addressing us shortly and share his perspective about 
our India's ambition to become a $5 trillion economy. According to World Investment Report 2020 of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, India jumped from 12th spot in 2018 to 9th spot in 2019 on the list of global top 20 recipients of foreign direct investment. Google announced on July 31, July 13, 2020, that it would invest nearly US dollar 10 billion for developing digital infrastructure and funding innovations in India over the next five to seven years. India's young talent and democratic structure are the cornerstones to achieve US dollar five trillion economy plan. Strong economies are fueled by big consumption stories and India's demographic composition is well equipped to deliver this. The key is making money available in the hands of the people. As said by Mahatma Gandhi, which I quote, the future depends on what you do today. As you are aware, UAE and India have started a formal negotiation for a comprehensive economic development agreement to tap global opportunities together. Each one of us present in this room are responsible for the successful execution of such agreements and for supporting the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji for achieving the targets, goals set for our country's growth. We have most of our CA professionals in this room who play a major role in the strategic decisions of their organizations. And let us reaffirm today our pledge to support the strategic relationship between both the countries. The sectors such as technology, pharma, and healthcare can both complement and contribute to UAE's economic growth. I am sure that after listening to our chief guest, His Excellency C.A. Piyush Goyal, you will get more clarity about the resurgent stride India is making towards a fight in economy. We have a gold mine in Dubai for another six months. You know what? Expo 2020, Dubai Expo 2020. I take this opportunity to again remind all the members of the chapter to participate and contribute for the success of Dubai Expo 2020 and our Indian pavilion by going extra mile as this is once in a lifetime opportunity. We will have our events from our Expo pavilion for which we are coordinating with the FIKI currently. Before I sign off, on, be on behalf of all the members of the chapter, our deep gratitude and sincere appreciation uh, to His Excellency C.A. Piyush Goyalji, who despite his busy schedule in Dubai, agreed to interact with us. Let me also take this opportunity to thank His Excellency Pavan Kapoor, Ambassador of India to UAE, and also our Council General, His Excellency Dr. Aman Puri, for their continuous guidance and support for the chapter's activities and for the collaboration opportunities provided to us. I wish you all good health, wealth, peace, and prosperity, advanced visit for the upcoming Navratri and Diwali festivals. Stay safe and stay blessed. Jai Hind, Jai ICAI. Many thanks, CA Sundar Inani, for your kind words. Now I would like to welcome His Excellency Pavan Kapoor to address our members. Namaskar, good morning. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, Honorable Minister for Commerce and Industry, Consumer Affairs and Food and Public Distribution and Textiles, and CA Shri Piyush Goyalji. Uh, Mr. Sundar Narani, Chairman of the ICAI Dubai Chapter, all uh, committee members of the ICAI Dubai, and all everyone present here, the CA community here. It's my great honor and privilege to accompany the Honorable Minister for this event, and I thank him also for agreeing to uh, address the gathering here today. Uh, I think his presence here today is not only a testimony to the importance attached by the government to its diaspora living and working abroad. Uh, it's also a testimony to, um, uh, you know, to the minister who, for whom I know that the ICI has a very special place and I'm sure he feels very much at home uh, amongst all of you. Uh, I will add, sir, that uh, uh, as far as the embassy is concerned in Abu Dhabi and our consulate here, uh, we uh, have found the ICI both here in Dubai and in Abu Dhabi to be extremely uh, useful and professional organizations with whom we uh, have worked closely in various uh, fields 
and I think it's, uh, it's, it's extremely supportive uh, what all they're doing for us and I think particularly in the realm in which you are focused, uh, they can uh, help us in a big way. Uh, I, I, I will say that there could not have been a better time uh, for the minister's visit to UAE, a country which is inextricably linked to India's growth story. Uh, you heard your uh, own uh, uh, chairman talk about uh, the uh, comprehensive strategic partnership between our two countries. Uh, this is uh, a reflection of the uh, guidance uh, of the leadership on both sides. And uh, you know, we, we have seen how even through the pandemic, the, the, maintained, uh, the, the, uh, the leadership has maintained very close contact and developed even new areas, uh, whether it's been in healthcare or, uh, or, or you know, areas of information technology, etc. We are pushing forward there. Um, you're obviously aware of the targets that we have, and I'm sure the Honorable Minister will speak more on that. But I will just say that uh, uh, we were very pleased that even last year, uh, you know, uh, we've been able to attract more than $4.1 billion from the sovereign wealth funds of uh, UAE into India last year. And uh, the Honorable Minister uh, chaired the high-level task force on investment in the ninth meeting yesterday morning with His Highness, his co-chair, His Highness Sheikh Hamid. And I can tell you that uh, from seeing the interaction there, there is a clear determination uh, on the leadership and the co-chairs to really push the economic and investment relationship between the two countries. And with a dynamic, uh, you know, uh, leader like our minister, I'm sure that this will uh, get a big, big push uh, as we go along. Uh, the minister also inaugurated the India Pavilion at Expo on Friday, which I think some of you would have seen. Uh, you would have seen, and I'm glad that uh, C. Sundar Narani has talked about your visiting there because I think we're trying to showcase uh, the best of India, both in, in our traditions and heritage, but also in terms of what we can focus in the future, the cutting edge technologies. And we are hoping that there will be lots of business-to-business -business interaction, which will give, again, a further impetus to our economic uh, 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 relations. And I'm sure that the ICAI can also play an important role in building important networks during Expo 2020 uh, with Indian stakeholders. Um, of course, uh, the minister has also uh, launched a very important uh, discussions and negotiations with uh, the Minister of Foreign Trade, Dr. Thani al -Zayudi. And just about 10 days ago, they've launched this uh, negotiations for a comprehensive economic partnership agreement. Uh, and he's, I can tell you, put some very uh, ambitious timelines, uh, which uh, the officials on both sides are now uh, working hard to achieve. Um, I think on the same day, sir, on September 22nd, when you launched those, you also launched the national single window system, um, you know, which is a portal that will become a one-stop shop for investors, for approvals and clearances. Uh, so these are mechanisms which the government is putting in place, but I think uh, for their, uh, uh, you know, for, for, for us to get the results, it's very important that, uh, you know, professional bodies, including the, like the chartered accountants, contribute to that effort and, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you have, of course, become an integral part of the uh, UAE economy here, and I'm sure that you will continue to uh, provide very useful advice to Indian businesses here, as well as to companies uh, coming here from India. So with those words, I, I uh, thank you very much for having me here and again extend on my behalf also uh, a warm welcome and thanks to the Minister for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, His Excellency, for sharing insights on the India-U relationship and the recent inaugural of Indian Pavilion in uh, Dubai Expo 2020. I would like now to invite our chief guest, uh, His Excellency C.F. Usual Ji. But before I invite, I would like to uh, request all our members to stand and give him a standing ovation. Uh, so that you know, we are, we are proud to have one of our chartered accountants reaching such a remarkable position and making us, all of us proud. So thank you very much, sir, for your great uh, commitment and uh, taking India to the next level in business. Thank you very much, Anurag. Excellency Mr. Pavan Kapoor, Ambassador of India to UAE, CA Sundar Nurani, Chairman of the ICAI Dubai Chapter, CA Hari Kishan, Secretary, CA Manoj Agarwal, Treasurer, all the other members of the Managing Committee, all the delegates who have come here today, 
I hope not only for those two hours of credit that you get. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. सबसे पहले तो भैया मेरे को एक्सेलेंस ही बोलना बंद करो। I've come home, haven't I? And incidentally, Sundar ji didn't invite me. I invited myself here. We have contacted the institute. It was a matter of chance that uh, while I was returning on the second evening, and we had to have a program on the fourth with uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, it fortunately got uh, postponed. And I thought, being a Sunday, while well, I know Sunday is a working day in Dubai. But I still thought that uh, it gives me an opportunity to connect with old friends. This is probably the third time I'm meeting the Chartered Accountants. Yes. 19, we had an event and I somehow seem to remember I've come before I became a minister. 12, right. So this is the third time. Chartered Accountants, memory apology is normally not too bad. <laughs> But more importantly, this is a special occasion when I'm visiting UAE. Of course, I could be very happy that uh, just like in my life, my first visit out of the country after my, uh, no, in fact, that was before my marriage. So yes, it was my first visit, was to Dubai when I had come to see the Jabal Ali Free Trade Zone and consider setting up an industrial unit here. That was a long time ago. And this time after the pandemic, with almost, what, 19 months struggling with the pandemic, my last uh, overseas trip was to Bhutan, another lovely country, another great friend of India. From where I returned on the 1st of March 2020 and I came to Dubai on the 1st of October 2021. Almost like the emergency, 19 months. But it felt very good to come to another very friendly country. A country with whom we have deep historical ties, share a lot of rich heritage, tradition, friendship. Honorable Prime Minister and uh, His Highness the Crown Prince have built very strong bonds of brotherhood. The people of both countries have very strong connections. And what better time to come to Dubai than an occasion where you are celebrating Azadi Kamrit Mahotsar, 75 years of independence. You are celebrating the year of the 50, 50 years of the establishment of Dubai, of the UAE. It will coincide with 40 years of your Dubai chapter next, next year. We are currently in India celebrating Seva or Samarpan, the whole three week period from 17 September. Prime Minister Modi's birthday till 7th October. On which day he will complete 20 years of uninterrupted, absolutely continuous, if I may venture to add, without a single day off. <laughs> As the head of a duly elected democratic government, first in Gujarat, serving the state of Gujarat as chief minister, then in the center as the prime minister of India. Without a single day's gap, there are probably no other parallel that we could find who has been the head of a democratically elected government continuously for 20 years. And it's, it was an occasion to celebrate 
like we would celebrate any other occasion full of festivities and fireworks. But as you are aware, Prime Minister Modi does not, absolutely does not welcome celebrations on his birthday. He says, if you can serve society in some form or the other during my birthday, give back to society so that it, it, it should become an opportunity to engage and involve the entire community to care for the underprivileged, to care for the those sections of society who need help the most. And therefore, for this 20 days, 21 days, all of us in India are making a serious effort to have an outreach to the less privileged, to the marginalized sections of society. Several programs are being carried out all across the country by, I would think, millions of uh, Indians voluntarily to give a message of solidarity with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and recognizing the huge contribution that he has done for the country through his relentless work to transform the lives of the people of India. We as chartered accountants have contributed immensely in this journey of 75 years. 75 years of independence is of course a time to reflect on all that we have achieved as a nation. But also a time to prepare our vision for the next 25 years. So that when India completes 100 years in 2047, we are working to a goal, we are working to tangible outcomes, a defined agenda. An agenda where every Indian has a better quality of life. We can take prosperity to our villages. We ensure good health care, good education for every single child, every single old person. We ensure good work, quality work with fair incomes for every able-bodied young man and woman. We care for those lesser privileged. In every possible way, take the country to greater heights. And in this journey, all of you, my friends, have a very, very important role to play. You have heard Prime Minister Modi talk about Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas, or Sabka Prayas. It is that Prayas that all of us have to engage in that will result in Sabka Vishwas. And as Chartered Accountants, we all know that there is great strength in our pen. A document that we certify, an account that we author authenticate, a paper that bears the signature of a chartered accountant, carries the trust and confidence that people rely upon, businesses rely upon, governments rely upon. the ethics that we uphold, the integrity that we conform to, the standards of our profession that we set for ourselves, truly can determine the future of the, our beloved country. Should we fail in our duty, and I am saying this with all sincerity, should we as chartered accountants fail in our duty. Can you imagine what would happen to our work in India, work with other countries across the world, the image of the country, the credibility of our systems, our processes, our development goals? Because every single document that you sign is relied upon by every stakeholder. 
whether it's a due diligence that you do of somebody's accounts before an investment was to come in, whether it could be domestic, it could be international, whether it's a certificate of fit and proper that you may certify, or a document confirming the authentic uh, status of any aspect of somebody's assets, business, credentials. And I'm sharing this with you, ladies and gentlemen, because as we work towards a free trade agreement with the UAE, and we are working fast, progressing very well. Dr. Thani was in India on the 22nd of September, and I also believe he shared your celebrations on 26th June to, uh, earlier this uh, year. And therefore many of you would have engaged with him and seen what a fine gentleman and what a progressive thinker he is. In my very first uh, meeting with him many years ago, we had hit off a very good friendship. And I think that came to fruition when on the 22nd of September we were able to agree to try and conclude a free trade agreement, a comprehensive economic partnership agreement going beyond just a free trade agreement. Also try to strengthen the bilateral investment treaty between the two countries before the end of calendar 2021. It's something that I suspect has never been attempted before. And our officials got to the task on the 23rd of September itself. And ladies and gentlemen, there's a huge demonstration effect in any action that you do. We had the Australian uh, Trade Minister in India on the 30th, just before I came to Dubai and over extensive discussions with him when we were finalizing the contours of a free trade agreement with Australia including an early harvest or an interim agreement that we can operationalize faster to get benefit of the low hanging fruit. Probably knowing full well that we have talked to UAE for an end December deadline he said, but Australia wants to do it before 25th of December. <laughs> I may be meeting my UK counterpart a couple of weeks from now. And I'd have to see whether there's a, another race to the finish in trying to conclude our agreement with the UK and the interim agreement that we are talking to them. Why I say this, ladies and gentlemen, is all of these engagements are important and necessary because we wish to expand our trade, our business, investment flows on both sides with like-minded countries, with countries where there is immense potential for India, where there is a reciprocity in the trade, where Jobs can be created in a big way back home to serve all those who have been left behind in the development cycle. I very often say that all of us sitting here today are blessed. Blessed with a good education, blessed with opportunity. Maybe, and I would urge each one of you to reflect and you will realize the power of what I am telling you. Maybe because somebody in your family, maybe one generation back, two generations back, three generations back, may have boarded a train, come out of his village and reached some trading destination, some city, some town, started working there and providing for all of us our generation through the years of hard work. It was that opportunity they got that helped us be here today, helped all of us achieve the success that we have and the prosperity that our children enjoy. 
and therefore for us as chartered accountants as the privileged professionals that we are i think our duty goes beyond the work we do in our offices in our businesses in our professions a little bit of concern for that section of society which has left behind who who has not yet boarded a train maybe who has not yet got the opportunity that we got can do wonders when we are working towards rejuvenating india reimagining india reigniting that growth that feeling of oneness as a nation and i'm connecting this with your certificate because should there be lack of adequate care and caution when you are certifying a piece of paper leading to distrust about india about indian businesses if you were to certify a wrong person having good credentials if you are not to do your job on verifying the accounts the fit and proper criteria the background of any of the entities or persons you are approving either for trade or insurance or banking credit investments you are harming that child who could otherwise have got a better life that person who could have made some more money done some more work through the expanded business that we are hoping to do through all of these engagements with uh, several developed countries you he would lose that opportunity his children would lose an opportunity to get get good health care good quality education and make a life of his own possibly at some future time come and sit in this room with all of us and therefore each one of us as we i'm quite confident we complete our engagement and come to terms for greater trade and business with dubai with the uae each one of us sitting here is an ambassador of india is a colleague of pavan ji each one of you in your words in your deeds in your behavior reflects india you may have stayed here for many years some of you for generations but they look at you and recognize you as an indian with a diaspora as large as 3.5 million plus serving this country well and i say serving this country well and honorably dubai could it have been made without this 3.5 million indians in in the world and we are proud of you we are very proud of this relationship and the bro the brotherhood you have built with the people of uae particularly since at the peak of the covid-19 pandemic when we were getting frantic calls from people across the world who wanted to come back home back to india i don't think we got any sos messages or any calls from uae that we want to rush back home. they were so well taken care of they did as well many large organizations met me in the last couple of days and in most cases they were accompanied by a chartered accountant by the way and then yesterday somebody i met i felt must be a chart he said i'm also a chartered accountant i thought must be around the time i did my ca turned out he was about 10 10 years senior to me or 12 years senior to me i think in dubai you don't age very fast <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the passion with which he was talking 
and I think Ambassador Pawan Kapoor is understanding what I am referring to. The passion in his commitment, the way he said, I will get you a way to raise 4,000 crores more for the Commerce Ministry to uh, help support uh, trade. I have this, 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 this plan which will help us increase trade in agricultural produce between India and uh, UAE. I think that passion that I saw in him was infectious. It was really redeeming. And that's, I it just reflected at that moment, I said, thank God I'm meeting all my colleagues tomorrow. I'll get a chance to interact with them. And I read from the program that we are going to have an interaction now. So rather than a long speech, I'll look forward to some engaging interaction with you. But truly, I think you have a big responsibility cast on each one of you. As we look at large investments, the ruling family has committed $75 billion of investments from their sovereign wealth funds alone. But we have not been able to identify enough opportunities. Each one of you can help do that. Look at the, why should India only be receiving investments from other parts of the world and, and in pretty big measure. Last year we had the highest ever FDI, $82 billion during the COVID period. We have now probably 70 odd unicorns in India. Half of them or 30 of them almost who became unicorns in the COVID year. I just met day before also somebody who I was told became a unicorn one week ago. He was at the Dubai Expo 2020. I'm just sharing with you there's so much potential. Each one of you can help expand the investment interests in India, expand trade between UAE and India. Honest trade, help change the perception of India improve the relations between businesses from India and UAE and therefore I said as ambassadors of India, possibly also as brand ambassadors of India for the wonderful work you do as professionals or business persons, I am confident that all of us collectively can in the first stage double the trade between UAE and India but in the longer term perspective make India truly the preferred source of goods and services from India, the preferred destination for investments from UAE to India, help strengthen businesses in India, expand opportunities for people to come to UAE and serve the UAE. There are so many multifaceted ways in which each one of us can contribute. And remember, keep it at the back of your mind that every time you do any of these activities that I've pointed out, maybe some child back home, oh yeah, ਕੋਈ <laughs> अच्छी नौकरी मिली अच्छा काम मिला 600 बच्चों का भविष्य सुधर गया उसका जो स्वाद है उसका जो आनंद है वो अपने आप में है आप जब महसूस करोगे तब आपको ध्यान आएगा और इसलिए जब मैंने भी सोचा कि अब अपने जीवन में मैं अपना व्यक्तिगत काम नहीं करना है और समाज के साथ जुड़ने हैं, सरकार में सेवा देनी है, तब मुझे लगता है कि एक प्रकार से ये 
मेरे जीवन के लिए तो कम से कम शायद सबसे अच्छा प्रसंग हुआ कि मुझे मौका मिला कि कुछ ना कुछ कर सकूं देश के लिए देशवासियों के लिए मैं उम्मीद करूंगा कि यही भावना हम सब चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स अपने दिल में रखें अपना काम करें समाज के अपने केंद्र बिंदु में रखें भारत को भी प्राथमिकता दें अपने विचारों में अपने काम में और जब ये यहाँ के क्या पंद्रह सौ में मरे आपके टू थाउजेंड सिक्स अच्छा हर रिसेंट में आता हूँ तो भर जाते हैं और आप बोलते हैं चैप्टर अलग है उसमें कितने हैं तो आप लगभग साढ़े तीन हजार सबसे पहले तो सुंदर जी और बाकी साढ़े तीन हजार को खोज के रजिस्टर तो कर नहीं हमने सबने उसमें पार्ट लेना चाहिए सुंदर चौक हम भी अगर जानते हैं कि तीन हजार और हैं तो हमारे सबका भी दायित्व तो है कि अपने इंस्टीट्यूट के प्रति हम इतना तो खरीद सकते हैं अगर कोई मिले और पता चले वो हमारे इंस्टीट्यूट का मेंबर नहीं है देखिए ताकत होती है कि संस्था को भी खड़े करो संस्था में जितनी आखिर ये सात हजार को आप इसकी सात हजार की सूची के सामने अगर लिखो कि इनका योगदान कितना है यू ए की अर्थव्यवस्था में व्हाट इज द कंट्रीब्यूशन टू द इकोनॉमी और वेर एवर दे आर वर्किंग हाउ मच डज दैट कंपनी कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू द जी डी पी ऑफ यू ए You may find it to be 99 percent. Somewhere our chartered accountant will be playing a role in every aspect of UAE's economic activities, and which will mean that he can contribute also to our potential greater engagement. We are now the second largest trading partner of UAE, India. Not only do we have to make it the first, but also first by such a margin. That the second should be far behind us, and therefore, let's get all seven thousand of us together. Let's demonstrate to our brothers and sisters back home in India that the CAs of Dubai, of Abu Dhabi, of the UAE in general mean business and service. Let that be our motto. Thank you very much. थैंक यू सी ए पीयूष जी अभी एक्सलेंसी काम में नहीं लिया सर आपने बोला तो फॉर लेटिंग अस नो हाउ एंड वेन इंडिया इज गोइंग टू अचीव फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर इकोनॉमी एंड नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द मेम्बर्स टू आस्क क्वेश्चन आई थिंक लेट्स कीप आर क्वेश्चन पर्टेनिंग टू द टॉपिक ऑफ द सेशन या माई क्वेश्चन इज स्पेसिफिक टू द टेक्सटाइल आई बी आस्किंग वेरी स्पेसिफिक क्वेश्चन वी हैव सीन tremendous increase in cotton prices in india and india i think among the number 2 in the world in cotton so what government is doing to control the cotton prices and we know that the free market is good for every economy but indirectly directly i think government might be doing something to control the cotton prices as it affect the industry also i think commodities and prices of all of these uh, products cash crops and all are high all over the world government should not interfere in that pricing because uh, frankly we in india believe that gradually government should get out of everybody's business day to day business and f let the market evolve when cotton prices are high more farmers will sow cotton production will increase therefore economic activity will get a better chance so i don't think it's important right now to control those prices internationally the value of products made out of cotton are reflecting that increased price of cotton or increased shipping costs that we are facing these days and i can only share with you that our exports in the first 6 months overall as a nation are 197 billion dollars the highest in india's history 
COVID for three months, the second wave, rains after that, we've had a tough six months, but the highest ever exports. So generally, my own view is government should remain out of people's lives and business. Look at the IT sector. It has flourished over the last 20 years because government remained out of the IT sector. So, I don't want to ask that the government will be able to do it in any way. No, but it actually... Padmana Bacharya, President of Indian Business and Professional Group in Abu Dhabi and past Chairman of Abu Dhabi Chapter. Uh, you had mentioned Sabka Prayas and you had also mentioned something in terms of agriculture sector. Uh, are there any specific sectors which you are targeting, which we can, as uh, people in UAE, uh, help in terms of furthering? I would, in fact, urge all of you to reflect what are the potentials where UAE can, uh, can really do business in a bigger way from India. It need not be only duty cut. Okay. It could be reduction of duties. It could be MRAs, mutual recognition agreements to recognize each other's laboratories so that it becomes easier to do business. It could be quality standards, better standards back home in India so that seamlessly goods can come into UAE. Like we recently introduced hallmarking and jewelry. Everybody from the UAE welcomed it. But they said this will help us expand our business when we know that we're getting good quality material from India. So generally, opportunities are there in jewelry, gems and jewelry, diamonds. Today I was reading the list of main items that UAE trades in. There's potential in textiles, there's potential in leather and footwear, leather accessories. There, I believe there'd be huge potential in foodstuffs. And we have to look at the potential, not only from the perspective of UAE, but UAE being a trading hub, more than half their imports are re-exported, which go all over North Africa or almost all over Africa, some other parts of Asia. So I would urge all of you in the next week or 10 days, and if uh, Sundar, you could pilot this as an institute also, that they all give suggestions, you compile them and make a brief note or what are the areas that we should focus on in our negotiations, you would be doing us a great service. It's specified with respect to when they say that 100% FDI is in the, those particular sectors, so they're giving 100% ownership to foreign investors as well. And in which, as you mentioned about textile, agriculture, leather, garments, uh, toys, gaming, and so many other lists are there, in which uh, the UAE government is also uh, putting a lot much uh, emphasis and I think those are the areas where India can play a significant role in those relations. So we can share. So send me a note also on services and right. what we can do together. Good morning, sir. My name is Akhil Jain. Uh, my question is relating to the topic of the day, five trillion economy. Now, do you think because of the pandemic there will be a shift in the goalpost from 2025? There could be a little, we've had a setback. Undoubtedly, the whole world has had a setback. But uh, on our side, the Prime Minister has made every effort to convert this crisis into an opportunity. We've been doing very transformative new initiatives, including the new telecom policy that came out, the <coughs> several aspects of the Atma Nirbhar Bharat package. There's been a continuous effort on our part try and liberalize processes related to coal mining or mineral mining. Uh, I can list out so many, we removed that retrospective tax legacy that we had received. So many steps being taken. Our effort is we should still pitch for that $5 trillion economy by 24, 25, which was our original thinking. And then for a 10 trillion by 2030, maybe. So, I am an optimist. And I believe that with the kind of efforts the Honorable Prime Minister is making, with the mood in the nation today, with the positivity that our businesses, our young boys and girls in India have, we should still pitch to make it happen. Then we should see that the target is big and the power is big and the power is should be really bold because when you are bold, when you are aiming for the sky, that's when you reach the moon. Let's go for it. Good afternoon, sir. This is Mayank Sahani. So my question is, 
the major perception issue which we face when we talk to investors from UAE on investing in India is one, ease of doing business. Second, the legal and taxation structure in India, which given UAE is usually a tax-free economy, they're not used to the complex legal and taxation system. So to attract investments from UAE to India, I think some level of reforms there are already being made, but further reforms need to be made. So I want to understand from you what are the steps being taken in that direction? Are you also a backbencher in school? <laughs> <laughs> no, very good question. Excellent point. Uh, I think, uh, as you rightly said, we've been making effort on several steps. But at the same time, there must be potential for many more things. As the Prime Minister earlier gave us a task to remove unnecessary compliance burden. And uh, on 15th August also he spoke about it, if you, had, uh, if you re recall. I released a report about 10 days ago on about 22,000 compliances, which have either been eased or simplified or completely done away with. Or after the Prime Minister's uh, clarion call to all ministries and state governments also. But there's another, but See, sometimes sitting in government, you don't realize, I've also now seven years not uh, actively engaged uh, in uh, business or in, in banking, investment banking or anything. I'm out of touch with uh, current, what, what are the difficulties you face? We on our part believe we've tried to simplify things a lot. Ease of doing business rankings, competitiveness rankings, innovation, global innovation index. India has done very well in all of these. But with your practical experience, particularly from the perspective of living in UAE, working in such a simplified atmosphere, I'm sure you have good repertoire of knowledge how what we need to do back home in India. So I would urge you to, all of you, to think about what your experiences were. And I would urge you, don't just tell me what's wrong. Tell me what it could be, how it could be done better. Sure. Solution, saath mein do problem. Tab easy ho Thank you. So, good afternoon, sir. Um, I've been following your journey and uh, some of the things which you do not publicize highly. In your, during your tenure with the energy ministry, you actually made India's energy surplus. The freight corridor, which is another huge uh, infrastructure development that's happening, and now the FTA, which is going at a very fast way. So I would like to hear what's coming up next, 2022. Uh, the second one is uh, India has got a huge talent pool that's available. About 5 lakh engineers passing out every year. 50,000 doctors passing out every year. And you look at any particular uh, profession or education field, there's a huge talent that's coming out. Now, from a, from a marketing of India point of view, maybe that's an area to also pitch in into our offering, that there's a huge talent pool that, that's available. So, just On the first point, I can only say that I've been uh, going through several ministries which gave me an opportunity to get an understanding and then try to do something in each one of them. My most current uh, addition is uh, food, public distribution, consumer affairs and textile, all of which are relatively new to me. I've never had any engagements of any significance except one or two uh, assignments I've done maybe 10 years ago before I became a minister or something. But uh, broadly, and food and public distribution, these are subjects which are completely alien to me traditionally. So a lot of learning in the process for me, but I do have plans to try and get the textile sector back into the growth phase because what has happened over the years is we have focused too much on cotton and all our effort has been based on cotton and cotton-based textiles. Whereas the world has moved on, two-thirds of international trade is man-made fiber and technical textiles, where we have a very low share because we never promoted this. So currently, I think the effort is to diversify our textile portfolio. 
expand our international trade. And as you may be aware, in every, wherever I've gone, I've tried to put very aggressive targets. I have in my mind that we should triple our exports of textiles. <laughs> we do about 33 billion last year we had done. This year's target is 44 billion. My effort is that 33 should go up to 100 billion at least. I hope to do that. Similarly, on food procurement and the MSP, food distribution, I think efficiency and integrity of those systems, the storage of these uh, products, maybe using operation research or techniques and trying to bring down the cost of this whole process, making it more transparent. Of course, uh, Prime Minister Modi has been working on it for a long time. One Nation, One Russian Card is a great initiative. Our uh, poor people, they go out of their homes to work in different states. Earlier, they could only get Russian at one point, one place, either the village or where he works. Now they can get Russian anywhere in the country. Part of the Russian they can take in the village for family members in the village. Partly they can take in Mumbai or Surat or Tamil Nadu, wherever they may be working as uh, migrant labor maybe. So that way we are trying various ways to make the lives of uh, the most deserving people better. I'll try to build upon that to see how we can do these systems more efficiently in the years to come. And of course, my job as industry minister to ensure that our manufacturing base grows the PLI schemes. I hope all of you are keeping track of the PLI schemes and encouraging businesses from UAE also to participate in that. All of, all of you are welcome. And it's open to the world. It's not only Indian companies or anything. Anybody from around the world can come and invest in India in manufacturing under the production-linked incentive program. We are also trying in good measure to increase our international trade. I have not yet put a deadline, but I do hope that we should go up to a trillion dollars in exports and a trillion dollars in service export, collectively making it two trillion. <laughs> I am working on a plan of action so that I can put a deadline to it. It's still work in process. And I've tried to make a competition between services and goods. So last year, services was about 194 and goods were 300, no, 290. The gap is narrowing. And frankly, thanks to government not being involved in service exports. <laughs> so I'm trying to have a race to the top that will services touch 1 trillion first or goods touch 1 trillion first. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, this is Mahesh with you. A uh, uh, lot of Indians, uh, Indian CAs are finding it difficult to get a ministry license here for practicing their profession. So I am one of that. Uh, I've been trying this, but how this can be helped sir, from, uh, uh, from ministry level? Sure, I'd be happy to talk to the government if uh, somebody can send me a note. What is the process? Yes. Is, uh, how can we simplify it? If there is any differentiation between you and any other chartered accountant coming from any other part of the world, please give me some more specifics and certainly... No, hurdle, hurdle, what we find is that only Bachelor of Commerce is a kind of hurdle for us because uh, who have already got the license maybe 50, 20 years back, they have Bachelor of Commerce as their degree, uh, bachelor degree. But currently they are looking for something, a bachelor of uh, commerce with the major in accounting and auditing. Though we are chartered accountants, uh, you know, uh, master in that, we are finding it very difficult now. De definitely, we will share the note actually. Uh, I think he's right uh, here, bachelors of, actually bachelors of commerce in accounting degrees accepted. Uh, and although you are a chartered accountant, they don't recognize. So this is the issue which we are facing. You can give me the details, I don't understand it. It's not a rocket science. Right, sir. Definitely, definitely, sir. Thank you very much for your support. I think we will take one more question and then I think we need to wrap it up. Okay, here. Yes. Okay. I think this gentleman from Washington also. Okay. Sir, you are sitting here. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much.
पीयूष जी मेरे पास दो प्रॉब्लम्स हैं जो मैं आपको एड्रेस करना चाहता हूँ फॉर द जो फाइव ट्रिलियन डॉलर का अपन जो बात करते हैं नंबर वन इज इनकॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ द कंपनी इन इंडिया बाय एन इसमें एक चीज है कि जो यहाँ का लोकल एड्रेस है दैट आई कैन नॉट गेट सर्टिफाइड फ्रॉम द काउंसिलेट इट हैज टू बी डन बाई द नोटरी एंड रेस्ट ऑल डॉक्यूमेंट्स रिलेटिंग टू इंडिया इट हैज टू बी सर्टिफाइड बाई द काउंसिलेट तो इस इसके कारण कम से कम होता क्या है कि यहाँ का नोटरी अपने हिसाब से काम करता है एंड द एंटरप्रन्योर ही हैज टू स्पेड टाइम टू गेट द डॉक्यूमेंट साइन तो तीन चार बार उसको विजिट करना पड़ता है दैट से डिफिकल्टी नंबर वन इफ द काउंसिलेट इज अलाउड टू सर्टिफाई द लोकल एड्रेस ऑफ द एंटरप्रन्योर दैट विल इज द ओपनिंग ऑपरेशन ऑफ द कंपनी नंबर वन सेकेंडली द प्रोक्योरमेंट्स ऑफ मशीनरी इफ आई वॉन्ट टू गेट इट फ्रॉम इंडिया then i have to transfer the funds what happens is here there is no dis uh, disparity between the holding and subsidiary company i can transfer the funds from the holding company whereas the subsidiary company might not have funds whereas when i transfer the money the money is not accepted by the indian banks they are not ready to transfer to the supplier and the money is getting back so i am not able to get the money uh, the machinery from there so that is another problem even after giving the lpos and all the documentation part first of all uh, to your first question i slightly disagree consulate doesn't have the wherewithal to verify each person's address i'm assuming therefore that would have been kept for a notary to do because then a local notary becomes responsible when the consulate certifies that they'll have to go and first verify it and we don't have that big a staff that ek ek ki verification hum kare address ki mujhe wo to bada logical decision lagta hai i don't think i can interfere in that Uh, as ka jo second company ka second comment dubai mein bada seamless flow of funds hai aur ho sakta hai main gehrai se is vishay ko nahi janta hu pata laga sakta hu zarur ho sakta hai ki bharat mein banks ko chinta hogi ki ye kai paisa uh, theek hai ki nahi hai us company ka genuine paisa hai koi uh, third party transaction ye wo kaisi ho rahi hai ho sakta hai मुझे इसकी जानकारी नहीं आप नोट दोगे तो मैं इसकी जानकारी लेके भी आपको भेज सकता हूँ पर प्राइम ऑफ एस सी मुझे लगता है शायद यही कारण होगा कि इतने सिमलेस फ्लो ऑफ फंड्स में पैसा किसका है क्या है पीछे सुना के थोड़े फ्रॉड्स भी हुए समरी टुक आउट मनी फ्रॉम समरी एल्सेज अकाउंट टू केट इन टू इज अकाउंट समझो ऐसा कोई सिचुएशन में वो करके और फिर भारत में भेज दे तो ट्रेल हमारे तक पहुँच जाएगी हो दैट मे बी द रीजन बट प्लीज सेंड मी अनोट Good afternoon, sir. This is Ritesh Saxena from Washington, D.C. Sir, what a privilege to be in your eminent presence today, together with my father here and my ch dear childhood friend Padmanabh Acharya. Thank you so much for your time, sir, and thank you to ICI Dubai chapter for the opportunity to be here. Sir, my question is related to uh, maybe not directly to business, like other questions, but sabka uh, saath, sabka vikas. Sabka Vikas is a chord that really touched my nerve when uh, Shri Modi ji started that campaign. And uh, you talked about taking prosperity to villages, providing education, healthcare, dignity to every child, every human being, making sure nobody is left behind in this development cycle. So, in that regard, sir, how can we, as common uh, men and citizens and NRIs, participate? What kind of avenues? Uh, there are quite a few we know, but are there any programs that the government is facilitating? See, I think, uh, of course, at the outset, what I mentioned earlier that through your profession, your professional work, your your engagement with business and industry, your investors, that's of course one way of ensuring that prosperity comes into India with more investments, more trade. Each of those will lead to jobs being created. Each of those will increase the economic activity, and growth is what will lead to prosperity of a larger section of people in India. So that's what we can do through our professional work. In terms of uh, supporting causes, that's each one's choice. I'm not one to suggest or push something. For example, I know that in the U.S., many of you have been contributing significantly to Ekal Vidyalay. It's an organization which runs one teacher schools. You know, it has a hundred thousand schools all over India, where in the villages, very often where children go to school, 
now with almost universal uh, primary education available in India for everybody. They go to school, but they don't get a quality education in those schools. Teachers are absent, facilities are less, which we are now trying to upgrade, trying to integrate technology to improve the quality of education under the new education policy. But what this organization does is trains a volunteer. Ideally from that same village, you may have done a little more studies. And he goes back to the village and literally below a banyan tree or in the panchayat office or somewhere, teaches elementary stuff to the kids. At a young age, at the normative years, they can really uh, help develop the person's capabilities and his, uh, you know, his understanding of India, his national spirit, his the elementary maths, for example, a little bit of culture and tradition of India. So like that, there must be several organizations which do good work. You can support any of them. We had had PM Cares was launched so that all of us can support the effort to ensure COVID period we give uh, care for uh, those who get affected or who lose their livelihoods or their incomes during this period. Uh, also to expand healthcare facilities that those type of opportunities of course from the government are always there but while you please do keep doing social work contributing to good causes it could be through rotary through lions i'm not advocating any particular thing i'm saying whatever you like there are so many religious organizations of every religion who also do good work right so that's for you to identify so many of there was a Jain gentleman who asked a question so many Jain organizations which do outstanding work for society also, but of course pick it carefully, pick whatever you all, each one of you choose carefully uh, of any uh, type. Do your due diligence of any organization, I'm sure you can do that well. But certainly the most important way is thinking about how you can give more economic growth to your country back home how you can help uh, maybe young startups. Let me throw an idea. Suppose, and I tell you, it's a, it's a business proposition. Today what is happening is a young startup has a good idea. But at the early stage, seed capital financing stage, they don't get money. But the foreigners are smarter, sadly, in terms of understanding these startups' capabilities. So at the early stage, when the young man has a great idea, but no money in his pocket to burn. He'll end up taking, selling out his company at very low valuations. Very, very, I'm told Flipkart originally sold out most of its shares, a very large percentage of its economic ownership for something under a billion dollars, $800,000 or something. Originally, when they just started. Right. It's 36 billion is the latest valuation that I was told about. Now, what I'm trying to say is that but the foreigners are picking up that early stage investment. They realize that out of 100, even if one or two does well, the 99 others who fail will not matter, will still make more money. But we Indians don't participate in the early stage finance. I mean, just imagine the strength of the 1,000 or 500 people in this room, right. even contributed to a pool of capital professionally run. Don't ask government where to invest, please. You all decide. <laughs> Pick up good ideas, get some, uh, you know, you can coordinate with somebody in India and create a proper venture capital fund or a venture investment fund which focuses on the early stage investments. Let the Indians own our wonderful startups and unicorns in the making. Right, sir. And worst case, paisa nahi bhi kamayenge. Youngsters ko ek confidence to the life man. Even yeah. after failure, failure is a stepping stone to success. Uh, right, there, right there is a brilliant suggestion you provided. A couple of them really, Ekal Vidyale and also the young startups. No, if they can be focused. I'm not advocating any one no, no, of them. Not example. Ideas, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good organization. But, but the idea is to take this progress to the villages, right? So thank you so much for that. And by the way, I love your Facebook feeds on all the progress Railways has made. So please kindly keep them coming. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Good afternoon, sir. So this is Vinod Joshi from PKFUE. Uh, many of us, just to share with you, sir, many of us are actually part of Ekal Vidyalaya and actually we are, uh, we are uh, 
contributing something to the uh, Ekal Vidyalaya, which is doing in tribal areas. Uh, thank you for sharing such a interesting perspective on the Indian economy. Uh, sir, I have a question. You said here in the UAE, there is a sovereign fund who is looking to look forward to invest in India. At the same time, there is a private sector in India which is waiting for the capital. They have a growth perspective. They have the growth opportunity. Uh, but somehow there's some disconnect that they are not able to reach out to the capital or possibly the capital is not able to reach out to those in unicorns in making or those uh, uh, private sector companies. Is there a mechanism which can be established or is there any mechanism which is existing where we can represent that private sector in India to reach out to the capital over here? Or is there anything which we can do possibly in terms of uh, making these two things meet? Thank you. Well, I think uh, that will have to happen through professional organizations only. Government is my padegi to problem a jayegi. Koi galat investment ho gaya, koi galat aadmi, or government ko itna due diligence sugera karna sambhav bhi nahi hai. Clearly, government ko to isme jara bhi padna nahi chahiye. There have, it'll have to be a professional set of organizations which uh, get involved. I'm sure there are good investment bankers and all in India, but uh, I do agree there's a lot more potential for building up this connect between those who need the capital and those who want to invest. For example, but, but that's where all of us can play a role. For example, I talked about the PLI scheme. Now, I suspect most businesses in the UAE may not even be aware of it. But if chartered accountants were to make them aware of it, that look, we can invest 300 crores and set up a nice te big textile plant over there, produce over there. There's an FTA coming up very soon. Textiles will clearly be an area where we'll try to get concessions and market access. Or gems and jewelry. Gems and jewelry, of course, there's no PLI. Auto components has a PLI. Uh, electronic uh, goods have a PLI. Semiconductor, we're coming out with a very, very robust policy very soon. So these things, if you, with the large investment appetite that UAE and UAE businesses and sovereign wealth fund have, you will have to become the ambassadors, keep studying what's happening back home, studying where the FTAs are happening and where the opportunities emerge. Maybe study the import data, what is being imported into India, and suggest to your business persons here that, look, this industry, maybe we can work with India and uh, expand. Some of you could even look at attracting people to set up industry in Jebel Ali or any of these free trade zones, which allow Indians to come and work here. That's equally good. If you have 500 people in Jebel Ali, you can do it. And after the free trade agreement, you can go to Bhaarat and you can also export it. So, you will have to go to our 500 families. So, there are so many ways which we can, all of us can come. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, uh, PUZ, for a great interaction and taking uh, so many questions. Now, I will request our chairman, C.A. Sundar Nanani, to present a memento on behalf of the ICI Dubai chapter to C.A. PUZ Goyal.